Hi folks, welcome to Methanol Madness brought to us by Dalton's Landscape Supplies. We managed to get our racing in on the weekend, so uh, plenty to talk about tonight. No AJ Bat, he's uh, still travelling the world. He managed to get to the World of Outlaws final at Charlotte Speedway just recently. But joining us as usual, Louise Smith. Uh, it was touch and go on Saturday, Louise, but uh, we managed to get a full show in. Yeah, I think we definitely owe getting that meeting into the V6 wingless sprint guys for bringing the track back, but it was great to, to get the meeting in. Yeah, for those that were there early, they would have seen a shower of rain come down at uh, really affected the track and uh, the V6 wingless sprints managed to pack the track down and uh, the racing was pretty good for the whole night. Well to get the show started it's Crash of the Week brought to us by Elite Rear Roofing, Mike Bell and his uh, roofing guys for all your roofing needs and a big incident here uh, Louise on the sprint car feature race uh, we had a restart here and uh, it all goes wrong. Yeah, very unfortunate for Daniel Anderson and not the way at all that he wanted to start the season going for a big crash like that. But it was just a little bit of contact there off the start between Corey McQuillan and Bailey Patterson. And while they kind of split their ways off the track, Daniel goes for the gap that closes a lot quicker than he anticipated. And he just unfortunately rides that wheel, landing back on Bailey Patterson again and going for a wild tumble. Yeah, it goes to show how quickly these uh, incidents happen with 900 horsepower under your foot. Uh, certainly things are going very, very quickly. We, we see the acceleration. I see that uh, Daniel started to lift his wheels a bit, so he had no control over that car. And uh, at that stage, you're just a passenger. But uh, good to see Daniel got out of the car and uh, managed to walk out under his own steam. But uh, that car was really worst for wear. Time to move on to the Pro Ben review of the night, and uh, great to see all the classes at Ruapuna on Saturday night. The first class we'll review is the quarter midgets, and Louise, uh, some good racing again. Yeah, we had close to 20 cars turn up at the track, which was awesome, especially for our first meeting out, as well as some travelling cars as well, which was really cool. Um, that first heat race with the quarter midgets was one of the best that I've seen mm. in a really long time, so the battle between all those guys up the front was really cool to see. But was the feature returning to Jack Brownlee's back in victory lane again for the first time at Ruapuna this year, um, and a very close finish between the brothers from Greymouth, Cohen and Lakin in second and third. It was close, and that last lap they uh, uh, almost exchanged positions, uh, just a small uh, margin between them. Jack Brown Brownlee's the fastest lap of the night, 18.69 seconds, uh, pretty good going on a fairly racy track. The next class we'll look at is the modified sprints and it was Harry McIntyre uh, dominating the feature there, um, Louise, uh, Courtney Jones second and uh, Gus Dawson, what a surprise he was. Yeah, in his first meeting I think that he was definitely really stoked to get a podium and it was a cool race between all of them as well, having their own battles respectively throughout the field so it was really cool for Gus to, to land it on the podium. Yeah, he did it the hard way too, he actually spun the car up, went to the back of the field, uh, a couple of cars dropped out in front of him and he had to make his way right through to third and uh, a great result for young Gus to get himself on the podium on Saturday evening. Uh, Courtney Jones the fastest lap of the night 14.86 seconds uh, so she's got that car uh, really uh, flying along as well. Uh, we move on to the V6 wingless sprints and Shooter Hawkins our uh, fa fan favourite Shooter Hawkins uh, took out the feature race uh, not too much crashing and banging this time uh, Louise but uh, some good racing for those guys. Yeah, it was a really cool battle to see Kirk Hawkins and Sam Johnston actually competing for that first place there for a while, but Kirk was definitely very excited, as he usually is, to, to take out that win. Yeah, he's uh, certainly one of the crowd favourites, and uh, we, we just love the way he races out at Ruapuna. Um, Harrison Brown got third from Invercargill, a uh, big trip for Harrison to make it all the way up to Ruapuna, so good to see you get a result. And I think, uh, as you just alluded to before, uh, Louise, Sam Johnson probably had his best meeting ever. I think he won a heat race, and he really fought out that um, uh, feature race. Yeah, it was definitely cool to see Sam, you know, all the improvements that he's been making over his last couple of seasons in the class are, are really paying off and he's definitely getting the results that he deserves. Yeah, and uh, cherry on top, Sam, he got the fastest lap time too, mate, 16.04 seconds. That's uh, only two tenths off the lap record, so uh, you've really got that thing going along. Well, time to look at the TQs, and uh, Tyler Warnock was pretty dominant in the uh, racing on Saturday night, uh, Louise, but uh, good to see a good amount of cars which we hadn't split into two groups. Yeah, the um, group format for the TQs works really well, and, and I think that a lot of drivers benefit from not having to battle so many through the heat races. They can really work their way up, and, and we saw some good results throughout the night that, that proved that. But um, yeah, Tyler definitely turning around some of those pre-season gremlins that he was battling with and, and coming away with a feature win is a positive start for that team. 
Yeah, exactly. And uh, shout out to your brother, uh, Ethan. He performed very well winning his first race at Ruapuna. Official results for the uh, feature was Tyler Warnock uh, first, Aaron Finlay second, and Ricky Brett uh, took out a podium. He got third. Uh, we know that uh, Ricky's pretty competitive and he'll be uh, looking to get a bit further up the podium from there. Fastest lap was Kimberly Yeatman. Uh, the dirt flirt, 15.73 seconds, was the fastest lap all night by the TQs. So uh, they've certainly got that car really racing along. Uh, we thought we might uh, have a quick chat with Tyler Warnock, and uh, Tyler actually joins the show right now. Tyler, congratulations, mate. That feature win looked quite easy from the outside, but uh, I'm sure there's a lot going on in the background to make that car go so fast. Yeah, it probably looked really easy, but, you know, winning features at Rupuna is um, definitely never really an easy <laughs> feat. Um, <laughs> we, we made a lot of changes in the off-season that sort of helped us put the car in, in that position and we didn't still quite have you know the package at 100 percent but um you know we're happy with how it went and i just can't think you know the boys enough they put in so many hours in the off season while i was out doing other things you know so um it's more you know a showing of them than it is me i think well i think what was obvious is uh, how far you uh, won that race by i think it was over five seconds and uh, that's not easy to do in a tq because they're generally all powered about the same and they roughly lap at the same pace so uh, I would say it's a probably a, a setup uh, which is going well, and the and the engines being a bit more reliable perhaps than it has been over the last couple of seasons. Uh, you've really got rid of all those gremlins now, mate. You must have had all your bad luck in the last couple of years. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny you mentioned the uh, the engine trouble because we had to pull out of Alzheimer the week before because you know the engine wasn't really working. Um, so we couldn't quite make that work. But yeah, I mean, a five-second margin is, is quite sizable and we're happy with that. But uh, Jeremy Webb sent me a screenshot of him winning a feature from seven seconds. So <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I've got to try beat that next time. But I think I just probably got a wee bit lucky with um, a wee bit lucky with guys, you know, getting held up battling while I sort of had the clear track. But we are pretty confident with where we have the car at the moment. So um, just sort of looking to move forward and bring some momen momentum into the title. Yeah, well, that uh, brings us right forward to the title. It's uh, being raced at Nelson in just a few weeks. Um, what's your expectations, mate? Uh, what would be a good result for you? Uh, I'm sure you'd want to win it, but uh, where do you sit uh, with uh, how you want to perform? Yeah, well, pretty much everything we're doing with this program at the moment is revolved around winning that title, you know. So I have the same goal as probably every other TQ competitor in the country. You know, everybody wants to win that. So uh, everything we're doing, um, everywhere we're racing is all based around winning that title but um and you know we expect to win it you've got to go in <laughs> expecting to win it but it's you know easier said than done so uh we'll just try our best and we'll keep chipping away we're, we're putting in a lot of work and spending a lot of money so um we're sure we can bring a good package and hopefully some things just go well on the night we'll see how we get on yeah, well, look, uh, you've got a uh, real professional team there. You've got a lot of sponsorship on your car, and uh, you certainly run that team uh, really well. So uh, we'd expect uh, pretty good things out of the title for you. Well, Louise, uh, Tyler Warnock's looking like uh, one of the uh, favoured runners for the championship this year. Yeah, definitely. And I think that there's going to be a lot of strong guys out of Christchurch, but based on the performance from Saturday night, I think that Tyler will definitely be at the top of the table. It's a challenging uh, championship, isn't it? Because you don't get that many races before you actually are in a New Zealand championship. And I think you've actually got to race three times before you even qualify. So uh, they really do put the pressure on these drivers early in the season. Yeah, an early title is, it's either you love them or you hate them. And I think that it's definitely puts a lot of people in a tricky spot because it is so early, especially um, people that have gone into new cars for the season or are mm. trying something different, it doesn't give you a lot of opportunity to test things out before that title weekend. But I'm definitely looking forward to covering all of that a little bit closer as we get towards the title. And I think it'll be a great battle between a lot of our Christchurch guys. Yeah, good stuff. Hey, look, Tyler, thanks for joining the show, mate. Uh, we wish you well at the uh, title, which is coming up in just a few weeks. Well, when will we see you next at Ruapuna, though? Uh, I think not until after the title, actually. Um because we're out at Nelson for the next Rapuna meeting, unfortunately missing that, but we'll be there for the rest of the season after that, so I uh, can't wait to get back out there. Well, listen, mate, it's been a great start for you, and uh, as we said before, we wish you well, and uh, hope you can uh, get yourself up on that podium at Nelson Speedway. Okay, time to move on to the midgets and some pretty good racing on Saturday night with a field of 11 uh, midget drivers competing for the City South Van Spears Midget Super Series. Uh, always good to see the midgets going around, Louise. Uh, what were your impressions? 
are definitely very impressed with the numbers. They're, they're on the improve and especially looking forward to the title as well. I think that there's going to be a lot of competition headed down from the North Island, especially over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, well, the uh, feature race was taken out by Tom Lumsden, uh, closely followed by uh, Mitchell Hill and Liam McCubrey. Uh, Mitchell Hill had a great night, didn't he? Yeah, definitely a lot of improvement out of that team. It's really cool to see, to see him and those guys get the results that they've been working towards. Yeah, but those that were watching on Saturday night uh, would have been pretty impressed by the uh, 9C of Tom Lumsden. That was the fastest lap in car, 14.73, the uh, fastest lap for the night. And uh, we happen to have Tom on the line. Uh, Tom, welcome to the show, mate. Uh, that was a pretty good performance on Saturday night. Uh, you must have been pretty happy with how it went. Yeah, no, it was perfect. We yeah, The car setup was great. The engine w went great all night. Um, and the, the track was awesome. Um, so yeah, no, it was, a, it was a really good night. You've been in development with that car for a couple of seasons now, and I remember when you first uh, brought it down, it was pretty wild and uh, uh, rough going around the track. It uh, certainly needed some setup changes, but uh, it appears to have that setup sorted out. And that XP4 motor, man, has that got some horsepower? Yeah, no, the the motor's great, and um, yeah, it's it's been awesome. Uh, and the the car's really good as well. We're just I suppose we we got used to our old car and we changed a lot of things on that and did a lot of funny things to to make it work and then to changing chassis we just had to I suppose forget some bad habits perhaps and um, and just learn what what the new car liked um, and I think last season was quite disruptive with me breaking my ribs in the middle of the season and um, other bits and pieces but about yeah towards the end of the season we discovered a few things um, that worked really well for me in the car and and from there it's been going really good yeah well we do remember Jamie Duff having a drive last year in the BT for mates and uh, that was clearly because you had broken your ribs and uh, it showed a bit of promise the car you had the setup sorted out for Jamie he uh, even commented on the show how uh, it was uh, so easy to drive so clearly that car's uh, uh, re really ready to take on uh, the New Zealand Championships this year, I would say. And uh, how are you looking at the championship, mate? It's in your own backyard. Uh, you must be feeling reasonably confident after a pretty good performance on Saturday. Um, uh, I definitely wouldn't say confident, but um, I'm really happy with the car and how we're going. Uh, I haven't really thought about the, the title too much um, yet. It's... Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll be trying our best, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of very quick cars and drivers uh, in the North Island and, and the South Island guys. So there's a lot of things all have to go right to yeah you know, for it to work out. Well, I'll tell you what, mate, uh, what I seen on Saturday night, that car was uh, at least a car length or two quicker than any other car going around, and you had some pretty good uh, peddlers behind you. Uh, Mitchell Hill was there, and Liam McCubrey, and even Jack Lowe couldn't get close to you, so uh, I think that car is uh, certainly one with a lot of promise. Um, just going back to that uh, motor, most people don't uh, realise that's a... Uh, uh, custom-built motor by Angus McLeod. How did that uh, association come about for you two guys? Um, I've always, uh, with, Angus has helped me with uh, shocks for a long time and I've always bounced ideas off him and sort of talked about things we'd like to do um, uh, and then he, he mentioned about the engine and wanting to build, he had one uh, already going in the North Island and wanting to build some more um, and then we were struggling to find a block for our, our Esslinger engine mm -hmm. um, and that was when we decided we'd, we'd go down that route and try Angus's motor, um, and it's yeah, it's been really good. It's uh, yeah, we, I mean, like anything, it, we had a few little teething issues, but only really small things. Um, and it's yeah, it's been it's been really good. Just uh, again, just different to what we had. So so mm -hmm. learning what what it likes and what works well and, and that sort of thing. Um, but it's yeah, it's working out really well, and we're really happy with it. So for uh, anyone that's driven an Esslinger motor, uh, is there any differences that you can sort of um, describe on how that might feel? I mean, it's certainly got plenty of horsepower, but Esslingers have lots of horsepower as well. Um, where, where is it better for you than uh, perhaps the Esslinger was? Um, oh, probably, like, uh, I feel like our Esslinger was a, was a pretty good one compared to a lot. Um, mm. And then I think this is just better again. It's... It's super smooth, and um, uh, and if we get a drivey track, it's just sort of playing chicken with it. It just keeps on pulling, so it's up to me to, to kind of decide how quick I want to go into the corner type thing. So it's 
yeah, it's it's um, it's good. It's really good. I can't I can't really fault it at all. Well, you've certainly got a package to be competitive these days. And uh, I was talking to you off camera before. There's a funny story about you guys getting that uh, motor and engine package down from uh, the North Island. I think there's a photo going around the internet with you with a midget parked on the back of a ute. How the hell did that come about, mate? Um, uh, I'm pretty tight and I didn't want to pay to take a, a trailer across <laughs> on the ferry if I didn't have to. So I, I built a, a pallet at work big enough to take the car and strapped it to the roof of my ute and uh yeah <laughs> i took it up there it was yeah it looked a bit dodgier than I, I thought it was going to be a bit iffy but it looked quite a bit dodgier than i thought it would <laughs> once we got the car on there uh, but we were, we were committed by then <laughs> well it was quite the story you guys have uh, certainly uh, found your own solutions to a lot of problems and uh, that was an interesting one and just lastly uh, tom you uh, you mentioned on saturday when in your um, uh, speech uh, you thought there might be some diff issues going on for your car uh, what's the update there mate uh, we're just in, in the process of pulling the, the diff and the drive line out at the moment. Um, it just started to develop a quite a bad vibration in the second half of the race. Um, uh, and only coming out of the corners, not not at the end of the straights, which makes me think it's something in the drive line. So mm. hopefully it's a, it's an easy fix and, um, and we'll be all set to go again. Oh, good stuff. Look, we hope uh, we get to see that car uh, racing again, Tom. Thanks for joining the show, mate. Uh, it was pretty impressive, that uh, race on Saturday night. And uh, we've certainly got our fingers crossed with the title coming here in February the 3rd and 4th. Uh, Tom Lumsden, he's a pretty good driver, isn't he? He's been around and driven a few classes as well. Yeah, it was really cool to see him back in victory lane. And I think that everyone really enjoyed the, the race that the midget class put on and all of the good racing and the heat races as well. So it's good to see the improvements that that class is making. Exactly. Well, the next class and uh, the final class that raced on Saturday night was the sprint cars and it was the Dalton's uh, Sprint Car Summer Slam. Some pretty good racing there. Uh, but Jamie Duff took it out uh, from Caleb Bourne and Connor Rangi. Yeah, it was a very good race and it was it was Caleb all the way up until about lap 15 out of the 25 and, and guttingly enough just kind of clipped the wall a little bit over the boom there where he shouldn't have and, and Jamie was able to capitalise that and, and make it stick. So it was it was a good win for Jamie, very consistent towards that last half of the race but up until that point I think it would have been Caleb Bourne that I was meeting in victory lane. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, some pretty good racing all around. Just a small field of 12 sprint cars. Uh, Bailey Patterson was a big surprise for me. Uh, Bailey won the, the first heat race and uh, he, he was uh, prepared to put that car anywhere. It was uh, pulling wheelies and uh, he was riding the wall a few times. And as a consequence of that, he got the fastest lap time all night, 13.74. Uh, this Bailey Patterson's pretty exciting, isn't he? Yeah, that first heat race was a definite, um, definite impressive run for Bailey, and I was definitely stoked to see that result for him. But gutted again in the feature, that that quick result didn't quite come to fruition for him there, where he, he could have landed it on the podium. But still a great night for him and the team. Yeah, it was, and uh, good uh, stuff, Bailey. We look forward to you racing again. But uh, joining the show now is Jamie Duff. Uh, Welcome in, uh, Jamie. You're a regular to Methanol Madness, mate, and uh, that was a pretty consistent uh, performance there on Saturday. You just hunted uh, Caleb Bourne down, and uh, you managed to uh, uh, pounce on the mistake that he made. Yeah, I think the um, tricky track conditions sort of uh, uh, worked in my favour for a change, and we sort of uh, put a bit of pressure on Caleb, showed him the nose on the bottom, and hopefully he started overthinking everything and forced a mistake. Well, uh, we've all been in those positions before and uh, we certainly know what it's like trying to lead a 25 lap feature race from uh, start to finish. Uh, I'm sure you heard your uh, motor screaming its way around. You were really following quite closely. Um, you must be pleased with how your performances are going now. You uh, started to really get things sorted last season and uh, you've now taken out a couple of feature races. Yeah, fantastic start to the year. I mean, the team was pretty disappointed the last year and a bit. Um, the green off the car and things started to change. I know it sounds ridiculous, but there's something in it, I tell you. Well, it certainly looks like the old Jamie uh, Duff style, and uh, you certainly look really confident on that track. Uh, what do you make of the new track, mate? I'm, I'm not sure if you realise there's a bit more banking in it this uh, season, uh, another three degrees of banking in the corners. Uh, the track was pretty good on Saturday, a couple of rough areas there where uh, that, that mistake of uh, Caleb's was uh, made, but um, what are your general thoughts of it? Um, I mean, when you have rain late in the afternoon like that, it's generally a really rough track and quite difficult to race on. But um, I guess it's a testament to what the guys are doing with the track, that it, they could pack it and get it back to a raceable state. And if we had another eight or ten sprint cars, which you will do on a big night, that 
that curve would have been another two or three lanes out and it would have been fantastic racing for a sprint car later later on so i mean like a gold cup night if they could dish that up it'd be a real good a real good night for the crowd and all the drivers yeah, well, I'm pretty sure it'll, uh, they'll be aiming for it, and uh, certainly uh, Chris and Kane are pretty dedicated on getting that track right. Uh, the other thing I want to talk to you about was those uh, donuts at the end, mate. Uh, you, you put your foot up at that time, mate. You got pretty close to the wall. Yeah, I actually lost track of where I was. <laughs> got, got dizzy, couldn't work out how to get off the track at the end, so I had to stop the car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was good stuff, mate, and uh, the uh, crowd were really appreciative of that. Uh, they certainly uh, uh, enjoy watching you taking out the feature win. Uh, Jamie, thanks for joining the show. Just short and sweet tonight, mate, but uh, when can we expect to see you at the track next? I, I think we're running a, a week after next. I think there's a, another race meet repair. I haven't really looked at my schedule yet, but um, I'm just going to hit as much as I can this year with guys like Caleb and Connor and you know Bailey and Steve. There's just so many, so many young, fast guys racing all the time that we need to be um, doing it all the time on our toes and yeah, representing our brand well and our sponsors as well. So, uh, yeah, always going to do as much as we can. Oh, that's good stuff. And uh, thoughts on the Americans coming over? Joel Myers Jr. You've raced with before, and I know you enjoy that. Uh, do you know much about Brenham Crouch, this young young gun that's coming from California? I, I've looked up a little bit of what he's done, and, and he's got a good, really good reputation. I mean, um, these young guys are racing outlaw carts from yep. four or five years old, so um, they're going to be good. They know they're going to know how to run the top, where to put the car. And if they get decent gear under them, which I'm pretty sure they've got, um, but they'll be tough to beat. But I love a challenge. <laughs> good stuff. All right, Jamie, thanks for joining the show, mate, and uh, good to get your insights. As usual, uh, the Americans are coming in a couple of weekends. Um, uh, Louise, uh, it's going to be great for our local guys, uh, certainly when uh, Buddy Coford was here and uh, Joel Myers Jr. really lifted the bar again. Yeah, absolutely. And I think even based on Saturday night, like our numbers were low, but the racing was phenomenal. So yeah. I think that even, you know, once those numbers start to increase and, and we get those Americans over, I think that it can only go up from here. Yeah, well, that's the review of the night uh, brought to us by ProBend. Uh, we'll take a short break now, and after the break, we'll get to Dirt Track News. Welcome to Wellington's largest caravan and RV shop. CB Caravans and RV Centre look after repairs, maintenance, and they are leak specialists. CB Caravans and RV Centre import UK caravans. Need to sell? They can help. CB Caravans and RV Centre, your caravan solution. Catch up with Will and Wendy today. Welcome back to the show and uh, time to now move on to Dirt Track News brought to us by CB Caravans and RV Centre. And Louise, uh, we might take a look around the uh, globe at the moment. The World of Outlaws have uh, completed their series now. Yeah, that, this time of year and it, it, everything kind of starts to come to a close over there. But obviously we've still got a lot of midget racing and stuff to come on the West Coast. But it was a really cool finale for them at, at Charlotte and a lot of great racing was put on. But would be Brad Sweet taking out his fifth World of Outlaw Championship in a wow. row, which is just an incredible feat. But this week's news that he will no longer be an outlaw next year. So he'll be moving to their full time national touring series with the High Limit series next year. So there will be no more Brad Sweet to contest for his sixth World of Outlaw well, that's a big moment and uh, certainly he's been dominant and uh, with all those uh, uh, marketing marketing of the uh, sprint car series that he has to take on now, surely mm. he, something had to give way and uh, it'll be interesting to see what uh, Kyle Larson does as well. I'm sure Kyle was going to keep uh, racing but Brad obviously is going into his own series mm -hmm. and uh, I'm sure that uh, Kyle might be following as well. Yeah, absolutely. He's just got to work everything in between his NASCAR schedule and the Indy 500 next year as well but definitely over the next couple of months watching what guy take which lane whether they go high limit or world of outlaws will be definitely interesting to see who goes where yeah certainly interesting time for the uh, world of outlaws and uh, all the big race series that are happening over in america well uh, time to look at uh, bay park and uh, we've got a couple of uh, races we'll uh, review uh, first up was the midgets it was brad mosen taking out uh, another feature race he comfortably held out michael pickens uh, right up until the time that Michael got involved with a small skirmish and his car was uh, taken off the track. But uh, official results, Brad Mosen uh, from Shaden Austin and Campbell Stewart and uh, the CB Caravans and RV Centre sponsored driver Luke McClymont got fourth in the feature race there, so another good performance by Luke. But uh, did you see any of the uh, Mitchell car racing from Bay Park, Luke? 
I didn't catch any of the live stream, but um, some of the photos were certainly impressive. They seemed to get a lot more rain than we did. And uh, whilst they got their meeting in too, I think that their track was a little worse for wear, but they still did a great job to, to bring it back towards the end of the night and still put on some really good racing. Yeah, big night at uh, Bay Park with their big fireworks spectacular, a massive crowd there. And uh, it's a great sign to see that Speedway racing is drawing big crowds these days. Uh, the next race we'll uh, look at is the sprint cars, and it was Daniel Thomas. He was dominant in the sprint car feature uh, Louise uh, from uh, Michael Pickens and uh, Dean Brindle but uh, Daniel certainly uh, defending that 1NZ title well. Yeah absolutely Oftentimes it's not uncommon to see someone win the 1NZ and then kind of have their worst bad luck streak <laughs> that, they've, that they've ever had so it's cool to see Daniel actually continue to, to take in those victories especially in such an impressive style. Yeah he's certainly going to be one of the uh, top drivers uh, coming down to Ruapuna later on the season which we'll talk about shortly uh, Two American drivers coming to Ruapuna Speed where we uh, alluded to it with uh, Jamie's interview. Of course, that's Joel Myers Jr. and Brenham Crouch. They'll be here for the 2nd of December meeting, and uh, that will be a War of the Wings uh, meeting, so we can expect uh, good things there. Uh, last man standing, we've uh, decided to have the last man standing uh, promotion, Louise. Uh, just for those that are unsure about that, we've got an invite race for 10 sprint cars. A couple of thousand bucks up for grabs. The, the format is basically you'll get four laps. The last two uh, competitors will get dropped off and then another four laps will happen and we'll end up with four competitors at the end uh, going for the last man standing. A couple of thousand bucks up there, a bit of a novelty event and uh, something that uh, we're going to try out and see how it goes. But uh, there's a version of this floating around America, I believe. Yeah, it's very similar to the Stoops Pursuit race at the BC39 that they run with the midgets or the USAC midgets, um, which is a really cool event and definitely gets a lot of eyes looking at it. So it mm. be interesting to see what we can turn that into with, with sprint cars. Yeah, it's uh, going to be an interesting format. Uh, plenty of people putting their hands up for it, but uh, there's a fair bit of desperation. It's a real crowd spectacle, this, folks. If you uh, come down on the 2nd of December, you'll see the last man standing. Uh, a reminder, Access Man New Zealand Midget Car Championship on the 3rd and 4th of February. Uh, we got uh, we glimpse into some of the midget car racing on Saturday. Some pretty good stuff there from the local boys. But uh, we expect to have 30, possibly even 40 of the best midget car drivers down here for February, uh, including Brad Mose and Michael Pickens and a few others. And finally on Dirt Track News, Methanol Madness Sprint Car Week is happening on the 6th of April right through to the 13th of April. Three nights of sprint car action and a wee rumour we might have some midget car racing happening as well and the possibility of a fourth day. More news on that to be uh, mentioned in the upcoming weeks on Methanol Madness. Okay folks, competition time. We've got our share and win competition back on our Facebook page. Share this post and you'll go in the draw to win one of 20 family passes to our November 18 Canterbury Championship meeting. That's brought to us by Veggies Direct. Well folks, time to move on to final thoughts and it's been a strong start to the season, Louise. Yeah, I think that if the positivity that came out of our opening night and the, and the really good racing that everybody put on is anything to go by, that we're in for a really good rest of the season, especially with some of our bigger meetings still to come. Absolutely, and uh, for those that are coming to our next meeting, we might just uh, preview that a little bit. Uh, we've got the Canterbury Championships for all classes. Some pretty good racing there. Uh, one driver I'm looking out for is can Liam McCurbry be the midget car champion three years in a row? Difficult to see that with uh, the likes of Tom Lumsden and Jack Lowe in his presence. Well that's the end of the show folks. My thanks to Louise Smith, uh, Tyler Warnock, Tom Lumsden and Jamie Duff for joining us on the show tonight and until next time keep your foot up it.